Hey folks, Eric Scheidel here, the HVAC Service Mentor. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today's topic of conversation is going to be a little more on the advanced side. We're going to talk about thermostatic expansion valves and more specifically, how to test a thermostatic expansion valve in the field. But first, a little disclaimer. Okay, disclaimer time. So this, as I said, is going to be a little bit more advanced and it's going to assume that you already have certain specific knowledge. This video is geared only toward professional licensed working HVAC technicians who have an EPA certification. You're going to have to already know how to use a manifold set and you should already have one. If you do not have an EPA certification and you are not a professional technician, you have no business touching one of these and you shouldn't watch the rest of this video. So if you are a professional, if you do have a EPA type two certification and you would like to know how to test a thermostatic expansion valve the easy way, I am going to explain to you how to do it and I am going to show you how it's done in the field. A little bit of background story. If you have been through a traditional trade school, or if you have read a uh, HVAC textbook, uh, say like this one, right here, <laughs> there you may have learned a method of testing thermostatic expansion valves, which sounds something like this. You go to the evaporator, you remove the sensing bulb from the suction line, and then you put the sensing bulb in ice water and then you watch your suction pressure gauge to see what it does. And then you put the sensing bulb in that warm water and you watch the sensing bulb to see what it does. And, and what should happen is when you put it in the ice water, the pressure should go down. And when you put it in the warm water, the pressure should go up. And yes, that is true. It, it does work that way. And that is a way that you can test the thermostatic expansion valve. But I got to tell you, the people who wrote those instructions, um, I don't know if they've ever tried to actually do it in the field because it's not that easy. For one thing, you can't watch the sensing bulb and the suction pressure gauge at the same time because the sensing bulb is over here and the suction pressure gauge is way over there, like outside <laughs> in a completely different place where you aren't. And the other thing is taking a sensing bulb off and then putting it back on isn't that simple and that easy, right? The sensing bulb is covered in insulation, usually uh, like a foam tape or cork tape, God forbid. And getting that stuff off, it's not really want to come off, at least not easily and cleanly. And then you have to reapply it when you're done. And then that special little copper clamp that's underneath, those things aren't really fun to operate. Um, good Lord, uh, you really don't want to have to take a sensing bulb off if there's any way to avoid it. Trust me, it is no fun. And you don't have to. The key to understanding how to test a thermostatic expansion valve or to really test anything lies in the underlying principle of how does the thing work and what is it supposed to do? And this is the tricky part. When I teach groups of technicians about thermostatic expansion valves, generally I have some more experienced folks in my classes, right? Actual working technicians who've been doing this for a while. And I'll take a poll of the room. I'll say, what does a thermostatic expansion valve do? And by far and away, the most common answer is this. The thermostatic expansion valve maintains superheat. And the tricky thing about it is that answer is actually correct. That is a true statement. The thermostatic expansion valve does maintain superheat in the evaporator, but that's not its job. Actually, that's how it does its job. What its job is, is to maintain an ideal amount of refrigerant in the evaporator coil based on current operating conditions. And as those operating conditions change, it will adjust the amount of refrigerant that it allows to flow into the evaporator coil to always be the ideal based on whatever those conditions are. As the indoor heat load increases, uh, 
that it's going to require more refrigerant to deal with it, and the thermostatic expansion valve will respond by opening further and allowing more refrigerant to flow into the evaporator coil. As the indoor load conditions decrease, the thermostatic expansion valve will respond and it will close off a little bit more to continue to have the right amount of refrigerant in that evaporator for that load condition. Now here's the other interesting side of things. As outdoor conditions change, as outdoor temperatures go up, the head pressure on your air conditioner will also go up. And that head pressure is a pushing force trying to force more refrigerant into the evaporator coil. Well, your thermostatic expansion valve is going to notice that and it's going to pinch off to say, no, 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 I don't want that much. You are going to have to hold back a little bit more. And then on the other hand as well, as the outdoor conditions get cooler and that head pressure falls, there is less of a pushing force pushing refrigerant into the evaporator coil. So the thermostatic expansion valve is going to have to open a little further to say, okay, you're not pushing on me as hard, so I have to open a little further to get a little bit more through to get the right amount to go through. So that is the key. So once we realize that the job of a thermostatic expansion valve is to modulate itself in response to changing load conditions, to always maintain an ideal uh, refrigerant level in the evaporator coil, now I can know how to test it, right? Oh, and by the way, your thermostatic expansion valve does monitor superheat. It's monitoring suction pressure at the outlet of the evaporator coil, and it's also monitoring suction line temperature at the outlet of the evaporator coil. And that's how it checks the superheat. And it is set to always maintain a constant superheat. Why it does that is so that it can maintain those ideal conditions in the evaporator. Okay, so let's get on to how do we test the darn thing. If we're not going to fiddle with the sensing bulb, what are we going to do? Well, the easiest thing to do is to change the operating conditions and watch how the thermostatic expansion valve responds. The easiest operating condition to change is going to be head pressure. We can easily manipulate head pressure by uh, generally slowing down the airflow across the condensing coil and driving the head pressure higher. We can artificially drive that head pressure to a higher level and when we do, if the thermostatic expansion valve is responding correctly, it should maintain a constant condition in the evaporator coil. Therefore, as head pressure goes up, our suction pressure should remain parked pretty much right where it was while it was running steady, and the superheat should remain parked pretty much where it was while it is running steady. Now, a couple of things to think about first. In order for a thermostatic expansion valve to do its job properly, it has to be fed with good subcooled liquid refrigerant. I like to see at the bare minimum a 10 degrees of subcooling. Now, if you have a more modern condensing unit, chances are there is a label on the outside that has a subcooling value. Let me tell you, those things have a tendency to be a little bit conservative. They can lie to you, actually. Those values are based on ideal conditions with a 25-foot line set. Well, you probably don't have a 25-foot line set. Very infrequently do we get away with only 25 feet of line set. It might be 30, it might be 50, it might be 60, it might be more. And that will make a difference. The thermostat expansion valve needs to have subcooled liquid where it is, which is at the all the way the other end of the liquid line. Where you're measuring subcooling is at the beginning of the liquid line back at the condensing unit. So a little, a couple of degrees extra subcooling above and beyond what the nameplate calls for is going to be a good thing. I don't want to see more than 18. That's getting a little out there, a little high. And uh, generally 12 is a really good number of subcooling to rely on saying, okay, under all conditions, my TXV is going to have a good amount of subcooled liquid that it can do its job with. So how do we do the test? Well, you're going to go ahead and put your gauges on. You're going to measure your superheat and subcool as you normally would. Uh, and superheat is important to measure with a TXV. After all, it's supposed to keep a, a constant superheat. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees is pretty common. And you're going to let your air conditioner run. You're going to let it reach an equalized steady state operation once both of your gauges are parked and they're not moving. And then you're going to adjust the head pressure. There's a couple of ways you can do this. 
You can just take a piece of cardboard or a unit panel or a, a bunch of your toolbox and your jacket and your clipboard and a couple other things and set it on top of the air conditioner to just slow down the air as it goes through. And when you do that, you should see the head pressure start to go up. In some cases, that's kind of hard to do, especially on commercial units. Uh, one thing you can do on a commercial unit is take that whole condenser side panel off so that instead of drawing air through the condensing coil, it's drawing air through that giant hole that you just made, and that's going to help drive head pressure up. Or in some cases, you can de-energize a condenser fan or multiple condenser fans if you have a unit that big. It gets a little harder then, but the idea is that we have less air going across the condensing coil, which is going to drive that head pressure higher. I'm going to show you how to do this on a little residential unit. Uh, it's a train unit, so it has that kind of side discharge around the top. So I'm going to go ahead and de-energize the fan. I'm going to just pull the common wire off while it's running. Let that head pressure climb up. Watch what that suction pressure does. Reattach the fan wire. Watch that head pressure come back down. Watch what that suction pressure does. Okay, so here we've got this unit with a thermostatic expansion valve, TXV, running at steady state. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the fan so the compressor runs all by itself. And what you'll find is the high pressure is going to go up and the low pressure should stay pretty close to the same. And that is going to be that thermostatic expansion valve regulating itself to maintain constant conditions in the evaporator. Let's check it out. Okay, so on the fans shut off, compressor's running. You should see the head pressure start to climb. If you're going to do this, you want to watch that pressure. Make sure that you don't allow that head pressure to get too high. Now in this system, I'm not going to let it go any higher than about 350, 400. As you can see, we've already increased somewhat, and our uh, suction pressure has remained pretty much the same. Now we're hitting about 275. Suction pressure is barely moved. Pretty much staying the same. Three twenty-five, and the suction pressure has barely moved. You can see that as the head pressure climbs and it tries to push more refrigerant into that evaporator, that TXV responds by pinching down, maintaining a constant condition in the evaporator. We're cresting three fifty, so I'm going to go ahead and kick the fan back on now. Now we see that head pressure coming back down. Meanwhile, that suction pressure stays very much the same.
Now, if there's any doubters out there that might think I've got a stuck suction gauge, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the whole unit off, and you'll watch, that, watch those uh, head pressures and suction pressures equalize. Okay, so there you have it. That is the easy way to test a thermostatic expansion valve. In fact, it's so easy, you could easily do it on every single call that you have a thermostatic expansion valve on. It's a really great idea to check your thermostatic expansion valve on your planned maintenance visits. And here's why. Thermostatic expansion valves can appear to be functioning when you have a maintenance visit. You'll find that, yeah, I've got subcooling, yeah, I've got superheat, looks good to go but what you may not realize is that thermostatic expansion valve could have parked itself somewhere in the middle of its travel and it's no longer behaving like a modulating opening and closing valve it's stuck in one spot and it's behaving like a uh, piston or a fixed metering device in which case that's a failed txv so the idea, the idea is that we want to test our TXVs in a way that simulates the way that they're going to respond to normal changing conditions. <laughs> I'm going to do it a little quicker. All right, folks, that is today's little hot service tip. Uh, if you find this video a little more advanced and you think, man, there's a lot that I have yet to learn before I'm ready for this kind of information, I encourage you to go to the website at www.hvacservicementor.com. There are a lot of great classes there available, such as in under the text flicks section, there is the AC basics class. Uh, there's also a, a couple of other AC related classes under tech flicks. But what would really be a great option is the air conditioning boot camp, which is a much longer term course. And it covers everything like what is superheat? How do I measure it? What is subcool? How do I measure it? Um, how do I use refrigerant gauges and all of those kinds of things that you would need to know in order to understand what I just told you. So go to that website, uh, check out some of those classes and see if they might be something that can also help you even further as you advance in your career as a professional technician. All right, folks, that's it for me today. I'm Eric Scheidel, the HVAC service mentor. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.